come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you are ready for it or not in our quest for total world domination. Hey, all we ask is that you go over to wherever you found us and hit that like or subscribe button or give us a review. All of that stuff helps us get found by other <laughs> like-minded folks like you and you know what else you can do holly what's that fantastic shirt that you're wearing oh this this my saturday night freak show t-shirt that exact one (laughs) this little thing oh i just got it from t public at the saturday night freak show shop what 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 there's a saturday night freak show shop there is michaela why don't you tell them where it is if you go to tpublic.com slash user slash Saturday Night Freak Show, you will see all of our designs. You can get t-shirts, tank tops, baby onesies, mugs, uh, various other goods. Guys, guys. John. I'm naked. Obviously, we can see that. What do I do? You gotta I mean, wrap yourself in... tpublic.com slash user slash and then, and then And then get a mug. Do I, because do if I you want to be naked, you shipping. be naked. <laughs> Okay, well, I have to wait for the shipping and all that to get here before I get dressed. No, you do you. I mean, how dedicated okay. are you to this podcast, Sean? I just want a nice, comfy shirt with my design on it, or, or one of the mm-hmm. designs that Michaela has made, or one of our mm-hmm. things. That's all mm-hmm. I want. Right. In a, in a nice, soft tri blend, right? Yes, those are the <laughs> only ones I, I... I need the softness. I have a specific yeah. type of t-shirt that I uh, have to wear. Uh, yeah. Isn't weird like that. Well, they're available. Well, we well, take public. Mm, they are. Well, we've pretty much uh, you've heard all the introductions there, but uh, once again, we'll introduce you to the the uh, internet radio superstars. Holly, uh, Michaela, naked, <laughs> and uh, I'm Colin. All right, and uh, tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by Colin. Colin, what we watch tonight? Tonight we watched the uh, the movie Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing. Swamp thing. Okay. Right. So this is the black exploitation Swamp Thing. Well, it takes place in the South, right? Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing. We get a little Swamp Thing. This is uh, from 1982. That's, and, that's uh, something you get when you've been sweating all day, and you gotta, you know, you get a little bit of you get swampy. You get a little bit of Swamp Thing. Yeah. Well, swamp swampy. Thing. Does, does Swamp Thing get swamp ass? Does he always have swamp ass? I think he always has swamp ass. I don't think he has an ass. He is. He's in a permanent state of swamp ass. (laughs) Yeah. He's he's swamp ass incarnate. I don't think he has any naughty bits, though. I think he's just like a Ken doll. I was shocked at the lack of swamp butt, honestly. Yes. It was nothing there. Nothing there. He does seem pretty airtight, (laughs) doesn't he? Like, nothing's getting in, nothing's getting out of there. Right. Yeah, I imagine Which he's is, always kind yeah. of a stinky, stinky fellow. I mean, he's covered with, you know, like I mean, he is crap. He is made of swamp. Yeah, a mud. And stuff. Would it kill him yeah. to give him some cheeks, a, though? Think of the swamp. <laughs> doesn't he have some, like, kick-ass cheekbones? Doesn't he have, oh, some, okay, down there. Yeah, <laughs> some ass yeah like, like it's, Lower it's cheeks. flat. Like, give him just a little. I don't know. I watched a lot of uh, uh, King Kong today, and there's, do we want to give him, like, an ass like that? Like, that little ass on the big dude like that's what i see just give me an ass because there there is negative um, ass here it's like a hank hill ass <laughs> <laughs> it truly is <laughs> Uh, well, this movie is uh, directed by Wes Craven. It was uh, not his first Ooh. movie. This is uh, as Wes Craven is trying to move, you know, from uh, indie horror movies into more respectable fare, right? If he made this movie, then it's like you can handle action and you can handle drama and you can handle explosions. Um, if you can handle p- and porn, you can handle. <laughs> sw- see, he should have done Swamp Wang. <laughs> <laughs> Swamp Wang. The the porn parody. Um, <clears throat> I'm curious what your expert your uh, your um, exposure to Swamp Thing is prior to this movie. None of you had seen this before. No, I had not seen this. I have seen, I've seen a little bit of this a lot. Let's put it that way. I've seen the beginning beginning parts of this a bunch of times for work and all that, but never the whole thing through. How do you know the character? Have you ever heard of him before? I've of read course, like two, it's swamp two comics, thing. like two issues. I mean, like ever of Swamp Thing. 
Okay. Do we all? This seems like a character that we all know what it is. When you say Swamp right. Thing, there's pretty much only one thing that that could be. Well, it could be right. the thing it, of the swamp. <laughs> yes, but I feel well, like yes. it's ill-defined in this movie. <laughs> well, yeah. There's well, uh, yeah. there's also Man Thing, the Marvel version. Mm-hmm. Anybody remember Man Thing? Now that's that you a say terrible that, I name. feel like that's what I've read. <laughs> I remember it. I don't remember what it looks like. Now that you say that, that, that sounds, sounds like way porn. more familiar. No, that it, sounds like porn. It it's like a knockoff of Swamp Thing. It looks very similar. <laughs> swamp Thing and Man Thing. Yeah. I went back and looked because I was curious who came first, and it turns out like there's a history there. No pun intended. Which is wild. So, so Swamp Thing was uh, made. It was created in 1971. There was a guy named Len Wein created Swamp Thing. Well, Bernie Wrightson. Of course, it, it was stop. Len Wein. Len Wein. Yeah. Of course, stop. it was Len Wein. Do you? Uh, there oh, you yes. go. That's man thing. man thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Man yeah. Thing. All right. So Len Wein and Bernie Wrightston create the character for DC Comics. And uh, well, actually, in 1971, he first appeared in a comic called House of Secrets, I believe, which was the companion yes. to House of Mystery. Sounds ominous. Yeah. And it turns out that uh, Len Wein's um, like high school or college roommate is this guy named uh, Jerry. What was it? Jerry Conway. Jerry Adams, the other writer who made Man Thing. So in 1971 or 1972, so they came around uh, in pretty close succession to each other. And then Swamp Thing ended up getting like his own uh, comic book series. And then eventually we had a movie in 1982. Um, Yeah, I mean, he's kind of been out there for a while. I mean, this is a character. This has always been my favorite superhero. I'm making a a, a bold uh, confession here tonight. This This, is my DC Comics This is very true. And and when we get to the end of this, we'll ask you, how do you feel DC has done by your favorite superhero uh in so thus far how yeah do you, do you in the say? adaptations uh i remain uh, perennially disappointed although the yeah. uh the 2019 uh tv series probably came the closest and even then i thought it like massively hit the mark that one had uh derek mears jason right was uh he was the swamp thing and the suit in that look actually looked pretty pretty good so, i mean was, right like this actual swamp thing looked like good yeah. everything else around it was kind of shit yeah, mm. played fast still, and loose with the, yeah yeah i still want to i didn't watch it when it came out but it looked interesting like yeah. it looked like a darker version of uh, or dark version of swamp thing yeah because james wan produced that and i think <laughs> gary dalberman who wrote all those annabelle movies he was the showrunner on uh, on that swamp thing it got canceled after like one episode and they, they, yeah. were, they were gonna make 13 episodes they're like nope you're on episode 10 you're finishing on episode 10 so then it ended up on the cw but we're talking about the original 1982 swamp thing well i mean i guess we have to say that uh there was a return of swamp thing uh there was a swamp thing tv series on usa tv right i remember that all before you got to the 2019 oh there was the animated the animated swamp thing tv Saturday that, morning yes. cartoon yeah so um where did, where, did, where, did, where did he eat the weird eggs with the gel in it where was the, which one was that in because i finally remember that i can't remember like in one of the movies or a tv show he had to eat eggs like raw oak to yolk to keep going i can't remember because i gotta tell you like i blocked most of return of swamp thing that's the one with heather locklear Oh, anybody? Okay. anybody? Yeah, I blocked that one mostly out of my mind because I hated it so much. It was a Jim Wynorski movie, and that pretty much says, you know, what your problem oh, come is on. right there. Um, but I know that's a big fan, apparently, from our mailbag. Like, uh, everybody was like, you should watch Return of Swamp Thing. That's more of a freak show movie. Um, yeah, directed by Jim Wynorski, <laughs> hey, it would be. <laughs> I was like, it sounds like it. Heather Locklear, yeah. Sounds yeah. like uh, it. <laughs> right. Is it anything like Nighty Nightmare? What? That's a deep cut <laughs> yeah. for, for all of you. Right, yeah. Because that was a uh, sorority, not sorority. What was the fucking? Uh, uh, that was sorority, wasn't it? Sleep, was sorority house over? No, sleep. Uh, I never remember. Yeah, I can't remember all those titles. I'll get. <laughs> um, they, they were in nineties, and then there was a murderer. Yeah, continue. Um. Okay, so this movie's got um, Adrian Barbeau in it. Uh, it does the love of Colin's life. Damn right. <laughs> Damn right. Which I mean, they, well, we should have seen this coming a while. It's Colin's favorite superhero and the woman of Colin's dreams. So, yeah. <sighs> although I hope this is not the movie that made you fall in love with her, because as we discussed in the chat, not her finest hour, at least her. No, hair. 
Yeah, but she's got that no. voice. Well, I don't know. I mean, she had like the, there was this, the fog and escape from New York all came out within just a couple of years from each other. And I think mm. that cemented her as horror royalty. I think um, so. <laughs> I, the fog look I get. This one, yeah. all that humidity down in those Louisiana swamps. The hair is the worst it's things, ever been. It's bad. Things to your hair. Oh, we might get a, a, might we get a visit from the guy who wrangles scorpions? I don't know. We're in New Orleans. <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> Yeah, does this this feels like Florida. I'm not sure if they shot it in Florida. Obviously, the story's supposed to be Louisiana. You're somewhere. You're in the swamps. This is the bogs. This is places in the United States where you just don't want to go. Uh, there's uh, alligators and water moccasins and giant mosquitoes and yeah. All there's sorts no of- reason to go into places like this whatsoever. Yeah. I, I really hate watching all these people walk knee waist deep fully under this water constantly. I just, I have to choose to believe in my mind. There was someone on set whose job it was to clear all the alligators out of the water before every shot. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering yeah, about, about that. Yeah. But what about the malaria? What about whatever's in that water? <laughs> like whose job was it to clear that out of there? I'll no way. Malaria over getting like my foot bit body off. condom. Yeah. Leeches. <laughs> Leeches. Right. That's another thing you gotta. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've seen stand by me. I'm not going in that water. Yeah. Dragonflies. Yeah. Oh, it's just, Okay. Uh, we're sorry for all you lovely people who live uh, in the Everglades and the swamps. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you're getting this, we are just this not is the built one for it. <laughs> it's no, our, we, just, stronger we would never survive there. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah far sorry. Stronger we're we're, we're from us. the Midwest. Different, yeah. different habitat up here. Yeah, we got land. That's it. We we love yeah, our I, land. I have I use sexy netting. So I'm going to go someplace <laughs> yeah. where there's but not going to be. We're used to uh, suicidal right. deer. That's what we know, but yeah, you know. Yeah. we got we got a wild turkeys roam around here. That's about it. <laughs> we do. I was gonna ask, do do other parts of the country have a turkey problem like we do? Like we have tons of fucking turkeys. Come on, fuck up your car. Like yeah. they, they are kind like of like swamp pest. thing. Mm-hmm. Swamp thing fucked up a couple cars. Yeah, in this I had a friend that like one flew through her like like pane window in her living room, just like hauled ass through the window. Yeah. Fucking turkeys, man. <laughs> Birds really know how to fuck shit up sometimes, you know? Well, what, um, I mean, so so this is like, uh, this is kind of like a Frankenstein story or something then, right? It definitely is. is. This definitely, this is a Frankenstein story. Um, I mean, I guess they all come from that, right? Because I was thinking a lot of Darkman as I was watching this movie as well, because it's the same story. And this story is the same story we've seen a lot. I mean, is there a superhero that doesn't have a tragic origin story? Yeah. It's also very similar do. to it's also very similar to Poison Ivy. Or like Robocop or something. The idea that yeah. you have a guy who's a the tragic a, hero. Yeah, but there's usually like an experiment, right? He's a scientist or something. There's a horrible experiment where he's mangled and then he becomes like this, uh, you know, this creature. But the creature has like super strength and all that. So that's good. But there's the love story, I think, that you're saying, like, in Darkman, kind of, you know, it is that, uh, yeah, yes. or, you know, because Frankenstein really don't have that. The idea that you like, or you even know, the fly. Yeah, you remember the humanity that you, that you had when you were a person, and uh, you're trying to get it back. So there's kind of the idea, I always thought, like, in these original, uh, the original Swamp Thing stories that, you know, um, the scientist, his name's Dr. Alec Holland. Um, that he was trying to figure a way to turn himself back, right? That was always mm-hmm. the thing. Eventually, kind of oh, yeah. like the Incredible Hulk, maybe, or something like that, where, like, you know, we're the, the adventure is going to be that we're just going to keep on going and all these, you know, episodic uh, adventures, and eventually one day right. he's going to find the formula that will turn him back. Right. The through line is just figuring himself out, but then he, he can get into the criminal of the week uh, yeah. as he goes on and stuff like that. Yeah, which is pretty much what the comics did until uh, Alan Moore came along in 1984 now okay so do you guys so you guys are not like avid comic readers just the big ones nothing not the minutiae but if i say the name alan moore that's a name that you recognize yeah yeah that's like some of the few comics i have read you know okay alan moore stuff well this was my introduction to alan moore this is before he wrote watchmen he took over swamp thing in 1984 the saga of the swamp thing for about uh 40 issues and what alan moore did not only was this the first comic book that didn't have the official comics code seal of uh, approval on it because it was for adults right but what he did is he completely like rethought 
who what Swamp Thing is. In Alan Moore's idea, there was one issue called the anatomy lesson where basically Swamp Thing gets destroyed and they take his body and then find out that like there is no Alec Holland. What happened was Alec Holland died and his consciousness was somehow absorbed into the uh, the muck and then the biorestorative formula regrew this thing that thinks it's Alec Holland. So once so then he invented John Constantine, right? You know him. Uh, so he basically, over the course of these 40 issues, took Swamp Thing on this uh, this um, epic journey of self-discovery and some of the most horrifying fucking little mini episodes. It's the best horror comic I've ever read. And through that, he discovers that he can, like, he can die. You know, his body can, like, die back into the earth and then he can regrow somewhere else. And he can actually, his whole consciousness can, like, take over a mountain if he wants to. I mean, then he became, I think, one of the biggest, uh, most powerful heroes in probably the DC uh, universe. And I thought it was like Alan Moore doing a dry dry run for, like, Dr. Manhattan. The idea that you got a guy who starts off as, like, a, a human and then eventually loses a little bit of that humanity and becomes this godlike uh, right. creature. So that's now, a, and it's got to figure out what it all is. In the Swamp Thing comics, does Swamp Thing ever go to Mars and say he's like sick of these Earth people and their problems and he's just going to fuck them all? He goes to a thing called the Parliament of Trees as a whole. Yeah, whatever. And, oh, yes. and then there's so, the yes. green and yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, say more. Yeah. But he <laughs> so does so have. What you're a, saying is that this movie did not live up to its potential. <laughs> what you're saying. Well, they hadn't at the time this movie came out, Alan Moore hadn't taken it over. And so we hadn't gotten that far. And so uh, Alan Moore, of course, also introduced the idea you were talking about. Yes. Yeah, Swamp Thing gets married. He has relations with this girl named uh, Abby and. Uh, I don't know if they ever had a kid. I know she eats the fucking fruit that grows on him and all that. But anyway, the big flowery. Uh, Wait, oh, yeah, it's a no, psychedelic no, trip. No, 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 no. You get no. You're 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 glossing Swamp, over that much too quickly. Swamp Thing Junior. <laughs> where where do they grow? Uh, they grow. He can grow them from wherever he wants. So if he's so he's fruit bearing, then all right. Now I'm gonna get into. No, so she's, I was gonna say, so does that technically make him a children. female then? Sorry, what? Right, okay. I, was like, is he... I was gonna say, if he's fruit bearing, doesn't that technically make him female? Then right, that's that's where I was going with. I'm like, so is he? He is <laughs> that's a, how he... both fruit bearing or... trees work. Yeah, he's a yeah. plant. He's a, he's a plant material. I mean, <laughs> just... right. So he's a female plant, is what I'm saying. Well, right. I don't know. He can do. Well, he can are do all sorts plants of... male and or female? Do they have? Yeah. Yeah. They no? do. Are, that's are how they, they pollinate. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Well, all right. And, and yes. the fruit bearing ones are female. So if he's bearing fruit, he's a female plant. Well, there you go. Um, so this this movie took place before that, right? So all of those images that you think of when you think of the the swamp thing with the moss all over him and looking like a big that's the Alan Moore influence. That's how Alan Moore recreated him, right? In the original, he was basically a humanoid um, you know, with roots and stuff growing all over him. He was a big green guy. Which I think yeah. they were it was what they were obviously trying to get out of uh, you know this movie uh, in its makeup effects. Um, what did you think of it? Yes. No, it's too cruel to ask what you thought of the Swamp Thing suit in this movie. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> you're not going to give me positive remarks on it. I, I would guess it's it's I, ill fitting. I have questions. Like, it seems like it changed drastically from scene to scene. Was that intentional? Like, was it supposed to be like he's growing more and more into Swamp Thing? Because at first he just looked kind of muddy and like mud with sticks. And then later he actually had some like moss and branches and stuff. Oh, I didn't even notice that. I thought it was uh, the same the whole way through. But maybe not. Maybe it didn't I didn't look like it. Okay. Yeah, I could. I thought it looked different too. And I couldn't tell if it was actually different or if it was just the lighting and the way it was shot looked different at different angles. That could be. And like yeah. the. The, or just the scene, shabbiness of its of it being worn for an entire production in the swamp. Caught up with yeah, it. right. Yeah, but, and the scene where like his arm gets cut off, that one looked especially bad. And my thought was, they're like, "Well, we're going to cut the arm off this one, use the shitty one," you know? Well, yeah, it looks like the yeah. brown shit suit. Yeah. And he had his arm tucked behind him somewhere in that suit, you know, which was like, eh. um, yeah, we'll stand by. <laughs> okay. So, so we're saying that the, the costume may not be all that awesome, but what do we think about Dick Duroc, the actor who portrayed Swamp Thing, not only in this movie, but in Return of Swamp Thing and the TV series. 
In the TV series? Yeah. All of them? Fine. Yeah. Well, not the new one, not the Derek Mears one, but the USA, no. he was in all episodes of that. He was Swamp Thing for a good portion of his career. Hollywood stuntman turned Swamp Thing. Yeah. Dick to rock. You're putting your... Uh, what? Uh, what? Come on. It's fine. Come That's on. compared to... I don't... Compared to what? I compare him to the other monsters and suits people we've seen over the years. Like, what do you want me to... What am I judging him against? Um... Well, there's a, uh, there's, maybe this is part of the appeal of the character to me. I don't know if this came through to you or not, but there's a, like a sweetness to Swamp Thing, right? He's this big, powerful, ugly ogre who can like stop cars by standing like a tree in the middle of a road. Uh, yes, this one does look like he can, um, he can go both ways as far as emoting goes. I don't know what the uh, new one uh, was able to do. He looked just angry all the time. Yeah, he looked he angry can- all the time. That's okay. what doesn't come across, and that like you don't get. I didn't get like the love story. I get it more out of this one. I'm like, oh, okay, that's sure. why the girl loves the. There's plant. a lot of <laughs> the actors. Uh, there's a lot of Dick's face still left in this makeup. Yeah. So yeah, he. I think he can do a good amount. Yeah, um, but you also kind of get when, the, when he's not Frankensteining all over the place and smashing tables. Yeah. and all that <laughs> yeah but he has like i mean am i wrong here he's got like kind of i don't know if uh you know again uh, comparing him against superheroes is bad but you know and i suppose dark man has this too they have like this kind of because they're tragic but i get the idea that like uh alec holland is like a, a kind guy right mm. and so even when he becomes swamp thing he's still kind even though he'll still crush your head you know when you and, and make you bleed out your mouth and all that other stuff but he's basically still like this kind creature uh just living out you know in the in the forest in the, yes. in the swamps uh, like nature the itself he can be both kind and brutal yeah um I, I found it a little distracting that they had a different actor play regular man than swamp thing you know because uh, i mean even like back in the day when they had like Lou Ferrigno playing the Hulk, I was constantly looking for like the other guy to be coming through in some capacity, even though I know it's not the same person. Like I'm looking for little things that make me think like, okay, there he is. I can still see like the regular guy in there. You know what I mean? I'm like constantly looking for it. Yeah. Like in the eyes and I or find something. It, I find it distracting. I'm like, why use different people? I don't know. I find it distracting. Yeah. Ray Wise is they, uh, uh, is Alec Holland. He was also in RoboCop, so there you go. There's that connection. But uh, yeah, yeah, that guy's terrifying and everything he's in. Yeah, except uh, for this, right? Like we love Ray Wise. They, well, Twin apparently Peaks. they couldn't ma- match Ray Wise and the stunt guy for makeup, so they had to do the stunt guy all the time. But they shot the movie like they shot all the Swamp Thing stuff basically twice. They shot all with Ray Wise, and then it didn't look right, so they had to stun double and reshoot the rest of the movie yeah that's a true story he mm-hmm. actually did like uh he didn't look good in the costume somehow he let, looked less like the comic book swamp thing or something to that, that effect i also heard that this was a movie that was uh comp- financially compromised because uh barbeau was saying in one of the uh the documentary extra features uh, that, uh, you know, they cut the budget like from day one and just kept on cutting. And so this isn't the movie, I guess, that Wes Craven intended. You know, this is a severely compromised thing, but I'm like, still, <laughs> well, it, yeah, it turned out well and made money. So, you know, everybody who was involved in it made some cash, including the guys who later uh, the producers. I don't know if you noticed, those are the same guys who uh, had the rights to Batman for many years made the michael keaton batman movies and all that other stuff we've also got harry manfredini doing the score um a saturday night freak show alum uh yeah it you know he's I've officially made it to the wall right <laughs> he's had enough. Enough. you know what it's uh, all w- didn't we just watch something like not even a month ago with one of his scores that was really obnoxious like, did we? i feel like there was something recent but every there was time something recent yeah Every time it's just the same fucking thing. It's just extremely loud or nothing. I actually, da-da, 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 I like da-da, the da-da. score in this better than like, uh, you know, even some of his later Friday the 13th and stuff like that. But it seems like he can only do like one thing. Um, yeah. yeah, there was there was some uh, I'll, I'll take it back because I insulted him in our chat. There was some subtle subtlety, uh, some subtleness later on in his score. That I did appreciate. Other than that, though, it's all it is. 
Yeah, he's got well, a nice hairy man for Danny. Like love oh, theme in this. High school that. slasher one you brought, Sean. That it was really annoying. The one that was filmed in England. What was that? Oh, Slaughter High. Uh, Slaughter High. Yeah. High. That one. Yeah. Oh my god. And that was bad. That and then he would he did Wishmaster. That was the other one. Wishmaster. Yeah. 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 That was it. Yeah. yeah. I've had enough. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah. I don't know. Don't need to. Um, well, uh, so Ray Wise is the human guy, Alec Holland. The whole setup to this movie is that basically he's this uh, genius uh, scientist slash botanist or something who's working out in the Louisiana Everglades, if that's uh, the swamps, where he set up a lab where he's developing this bio-restorative formula. And what it does is it will, uh, he's trying to combine animals and plants at a uh, cellular level to, you know, Feed the world, the, the world hunger. We're going to conquer it because we're going to make plants that can get up and walk around and, and you know, like triffids or something, right? I don't know what you plan. Sure, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, Seems like a great idea. <laughs> and uh, Adrian Barbeau plays a uh, government agent who's set out there to supervise him or something. She's part of his security detail. And uh, it turns out that there's this evil organization led by Louis Jordan. Uh, <laughs> from Octopussy and, and Dracula and all that other stuff. Uh, Louis oh Jordan is a character called Arcane, which is, that's a, you know, a name from the comics, even though the character is different. Um, mm. And he wants the formula. And so these two men are on a collision course as we, yeah, so he's going to, he's going to bond villain his way to that formula. Like nobody ever has before. Oh Yeah. yeah. And he's got a uh, a whole galaxy of dis uh, disposable henchmen all in their fatigues creeping around in the swamp. Um, there's a couple familiar faces there because we got David Hess, who uh, was the bad guy in Last House on the Left. And, you know, aside from that, like House on the Edge of the Park or something. I don't know what else the hell David Hess has been in. Um, but he made, obviously, an impression on uh, Wes Craven um, yeah. from Last House. So you put him in this and uh, Nicholas Worth. Nicholas Worth is your dark man From connection. Dark he, man. Yeah. But he were also putting him on the Saturday night freak show wall of fame because Nicholas Worth, in addition to being in dark man, which we also did on this show, he was one of the frogs and hell comes to frog town. Wow. What? There you go. What a collection. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and he plays Bruno, uh, the, uh, the like subordinate, to ferret right and all these names are like okay yeah what we got going on here odd yeah so anyway tell us a little bit about the uh how does this how do we get started what's the horrible catastrophic incident that happens and and how is swamp thing born <laughs> uh they discover the reanimator serum is what they do um so what, what is he messing with again like you said he's trying to combine animals and plants at a cellular level so they can you know help the world um, yeah. but i think there's a com arcane is a competing is competing in this or wants his formula for this for his own evil doings and so he sends a team in oh, well he's he's actually he's infiltrated the lab for the past like three months or something like that and we find this out because he whips off a rubber mask in a pretty convincing cut that i was yeah. shocked that this was yeah. happening because i'd never seen that part before and that's a pretty good poll, but yes, this is full spy movie rubber mask reveal that he is a mustache twitching, uh, mustache twirling Bond villain. Yeah, and then uh, and he ends up uh, you know like taking Holland's sister hostage because I think you always have to have that the collateral damage of either the wife or the sister who yes. then kind of also gives you that kind of uh, emotional tug right that he's losing family um, and. Holland ends up getting the stuff splashed on him. We've also established that it's like an explosive, right? Kind of like yes. nitroglycerin. And he goes out into the swamp in a big blaze of fucking glory is this guy. <laughs> it's a pretty good, you know, like the, after watching that Kane Hodder story, I become more keen on watching guys doing uh, fire stunts in movies and how long they stay on, uh, in, on fire. <laughs> yeah. Because that was a that was a pretty good walk through that door out to off that dock. Face first off burn. the dock on fire into the, the swamp. 
Yeah, yeah. Like, like full, on, like full on fire. That was crazy on fire. Yeah. I hope we got really good hazard pay because this stressed me out. I was like, oh my <laughs> yeah, god. Yeah, me too. This is the magic of CGI. Kids can't do this for you. You have to actually see a man on fire for a good like thirty seconds to go. Like, it's oh a my long god. Time. Yeah. yeah. And then let me throw myself into alligator water. Yeah. That's how I'm gonna. That's the next yeah. step. Yeah, apparently Joel Silver was looking at doing a Swamp Thing movie uh, sometime in the he 2000s. He should do a Swamp Thing movie. Yes. Yeah, and he said, I think, uh, it's, uh, so we're not doing a suit this time. It's all going to be CG. That's the only way to go. CG. But then wow. in 2019, they did it with a suit. So, you know, thank God. <laughs> um, I think, yeah. I think you do a suit, but you do like, like, maybe on like the ends of the limbs and stuff, you'd CGI like extra tendrils and stuff on. Yeah. You can you know? some moving but, around on it or yeah. CG, you know, his eyes. So they glow red or yeah. whatever the hell. Yeah. That's what they all say. Or, you know, the just get the makeup on his eyes. That'd be a start for this movie. Jesus Christ. I don't want to see this actor's <laughs> eyes through this. <laughs> it's getting a little patchy there at certain points. It sure is, that really is. is that a blue shirt? I see. Close. Yeah. Yeah, the makeup effects, needless to say, do not hold up in this movie, unfortunately. Uh, it's a rubber suit with zippers, you know, uh, hidden under the, uh, the the roots running down the back of it. Uh, it doesn't blend very well. Of course, you know, they're putting the guy in water all the time. They're giving close-ups of it. It's like, it doesn't really look all that impressive. Um, you know, obviously it did when yeah. I was a kid, or, you know, it, it, lo- it read better, but now it's like, yeah. Like all, all yeah. I can think about is how actually swampy he is inside of that rubber suit in the middle of the hum- the humidity that he had to have been surrounded by. And whatever water's leaking into that thing. Yeah. Is just, oh, he Ugh. must have smelled awful at the end of the I day. And those leeches inside that suit. Yeah. Miserable. Aww. Yeah, because I think Dick DeRock said that it took, I don't know, like four hours to get into that makeup on that first movie. By the time they did the series, I think they were they had a modified version of either that suit or the Return of Swamp Thing suit. And he said he was able to get in and out of it in about 45 minutes, but four hours or so, of course, uh, for this first nope. movie. <laughs> Sweat all day. <laughs> the fuck it's not all wine and roses, this. kids. Yeah. Um, although, although that that rubber suit is not as offensive as the uh, costume that we see at the end of the movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're we're gonna get Woo! there because there were some Woof. there were some choices Woof! that were made um, that oh, we yeah. can only assume were due to budget cuts. But so Adrian Barbeau is like the only person who es- escapes from this as the bad guys come in and burn the whole place down, and she saves a notebook that has the um, the formula the final part of the formula in it. So this sets up basically the, uh, you know, the dynamics of the story. The bad guys need the formula or they need the notebook to complete the formula. And so we got to get Adrian Barbeau um, throughout the movie as she's running away from, you know, running through the swamps. Everything. Um, She's running from everything. That's this movie is Adrian Barbeau running from something. It's something saving her. And then he walks away. And then Adrian Barbo walks away and gets captured and they runs after her. That happens again. That happen. That's this movie. Yeah. Yeah, that is the movie. <laughs> it's a, a, an economy of, of storytelling. Um, so <laughs> that's the worst. Thing, yeah. Well, she meets, uh, she does have an ally in this. She meets a young kid named Jude who apparently runs a convenience store. I mean, what's the deal with Jude? Right. What is I, the deal I with him? He, I think he found that convenience store to tell you the truth. Well, why That's what it seems like. Like, what is the point of this character? To I mean, save Elmer? her. I think like uh, she needs someone to basically show her around or like, I don't know, like, you know, Hey, I'm in a jam. She, he's got the phone. Hey, I need to get over here. He's a local. So he, he knows the territory and he's got the transportation and all that stuff to get her from here to there to everywhere. And it's the, yeah, it gives her a friend and it's the eighties. They were always just throwing kids into movies, weren't they? Like yeah. kid sidekicks. Wasn't that big in the eighties? Well, plus That's this true. is a PG rated movie that was based off of a comic character. And back then comics were basically, you know, like uh, uh, the idea was that kids were, you know, the audience for it. So it was like, this is going to be a, a kid friendly movie, which is kind of funny because sure. uh, they shot a version of this movie that runs an extra like two or three minutes um which includes if i remember because i think i've only seen it once 
Um, several more topless shots. Of, we do see like side boob in this one of Adrian Barbeau when she's bathing, yes. but I think there's more like full frontal, you know, topless shots in the longer one. And it's then, like, I, because I'm uh, dedicated and I do my research, I went uh-huh. and found the scene. Uh, it's like a, it is gratuitous. It is like a minute of a non moving camera shot of her just rubbing water on herself in the middle of a pond. It is one of the most gratuitous things I've ever seen. Yeah. It's fantastic, but wow. I also and seem then, to remember that's why they shot it. At the end of the movie, at the party scene at Arcane's uh, mansion, uh, there were also like topless dancers dancing on the on the tables, and that was uh-huh. eliminated from the... So, like, they shot this long version. I'm like, you know, well, that's R-rated stuff. Then they cut it down to the PG version that came out, right? And then uh, somehow in the 19, I think it was the late 1990s or early 2000s, uh, MGM put this fucking movie back out on DVD. But and so it was rated PG, but they put the international cut on it. And so that version is now like highly sought after. If you can find that DVD somewhere, uh, oh, man. it's worth an awful lot of money. Can you imagine renting a nice PG, nice PG movie for the whole family? And there's just a minute of Adrian Barbo bathing. Yeah, I mean I've like seen right House of the, the Ducks, so yes, <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Yeah, that is that is a more challenging movie in that regard. Yes, <laughs> I would agree. There's duck boobs in the opening scene of that movie. There's uh, a f- heavily suggested bestiality in that movie. Yeah, I hate that movie. <laughs> the things that were okay for kids back in the day it's kind of amazing but yeah i mean that is what happened somebody rented it at a video store somewhere and saw this and called and somehow that was how they figured out that they would put out the wrong version and had to recall it and put another uh another copy out in circulation um so if you have that one it's worth it's worth a good uh good chunk of change now um so uh there's um well, I'm trying to like work this out. So basically, did, I mean, you, th- did you forget at what point Adrian Barbeau was getting chased where we were at in the movie? <laughs> was it the third which, time what, or the fifth yeah, time? Which, yeah. chase, which, one are we which at? chase are we working on? Well, there's always the, because Louis Jordan and his crew are trying to work out like, who is this? Th- what is this thing that just like shows up the morning after we kill everybody and starts fucking with all our guys? And then it's like, then it turns out that the, the thing saves Adrian Barbeau by standing in front of the car, you know, in a pretty cool scene or like, you know, throwing over boats out in the Everglades. And then he's like, ah, if wherever the girl goes, that's where the thing goes. And then we only have to chase the girl and the thing will show up. And then they end up netting swamp thing. The poor guy. There's a scene where he goes back to, there's actually a couple of, you, like, you skipped over. Yeah. There's the whole, uh, he lost his arm before that. Man. And he threw a book in the woods. That was hilarious. You know, I know this is a comic book thing, but I really have a hard time caring about a story that is a bunch of people chasing after a guy's diary. I'm just like, <laughs> cares, man. Who fucking cares? I understand there's important science stuff in there, but and, like, yeah, what? Then you have the key to well, because genius. Remember, uh, talent only takes you so far, but genius will take you, and the world will bow because they'll either star worship you or starve if you have. But this just book. because you have it doesn't mean you can understand it. <laughs> right. He's an evil no? genius, and he totally understands it. Okay. <laughs> And if not, he um, has a sample. Yeah. You know, I had a number of, you know, <laughs> I don't know, it, it, fucking algebra books in high school. Didn't fucking understand them, but I had them. It doesn't mean I could do anything with them. Yeah, but sure. I get the impression that Arcane, Arcane does understand, you know, is going to make it. But then he gets the idea that, like, you know, we don't actually have to even synthesize the thing or get the notebook. We'll just capture the swamp thing and we'll be able to get it, nice. like, extract it right out of him. Um but of course, they lose a couple guys on the way. There were a couple scenes that I did actually that that kind of uh, uh, stopped the movie that I kind of liked, which was uh, one where Swamp Thing goes back to the. Uh, well, I guess we got to say um, the Nicholas um, Worth character is Bruno, right? He's one of the uh, the thugs that are out there, you know, with the with Arcane's guys. And there's a couple of scenes where we see him maybe feeling bad about killing everybody in this, uh, this science compound, right? Like he's, I don't know. 
it's not like he feels, I don't know, is it remorse or something? Because he finds like the Hol- uh, Linda Holland's um, little necklace and then he ends up putting it on that little tree that they grew in their, in their experiment. Yeah, he's a weird, he's a very weird character. Like his arc is, is up and down throughout this movie, especially when he changes forms later on. Like yeah. he's all over the place. Um, yeah, it feels like they want to have him doing more, but they don't ultimately give him more. I well, think earlier like on because the, they could all be like um, because we know them. I think we know the actors, but they could all be, just be faceless dudes at this point. But they're giving him a little bit of uh, humanity as opposed to Ferret, yeah. who's just out there like I'm. I don't, you know, he's like mocking people as he's killing them, right? Yes. Uh, Nicholas Worth, we get the idea, feels a little bad, so we feel a little bit of sympathy for them, which would then set up the kind of the end scene. Um, yes. But I also like that scene where Swamp Thing comes back and kind of find, you know, it's like the only scene where he's not running around chasing people or he comes back and finds that um, locket, you know. And I was thinking, like, who does he think left that there? Does he think it was like Adrian Barbeau's character did or did he think that it was, you know, one of the uh, the uh, I think he just found it. I don't think he was thinking about who left it there. Well, um, I think he knows his sister died there and it just ended up there. I don't think. Yeah, that's what I took from it, too. Okay. Well, um, so they end up catching him after they chop his arm off, uh, because you know you got guys running okay. around with machetes. Damn it, you're gonna use that fucking machete. I mean, it's the thing you gotta do, because at this point, I mean, we know this is a uh a, a comic book hero. Like, you gotta start wondering, well, when does Swamp Thing start realizing like the powers that he has? Mm-hmm. Like when do we as an audience get to see that as well? So, I mean, this is kind of the start of it we go a little while we know he's got super strength from the way he's tossing around cars and boats and shit but this is when we start i I do find it uh, i do find it a little odd that we never like he doesn't seem to have those moments of like holy shit i can do that he seems to already just know that he can holly would you say he's a mary sue what's a mary sue (laughs) uh (laughs) someone who has no sort of um training or backstory as to why they can do things they just all of a sudden can do things yeah Mm because he's been you know doused in a super restorative bio plant yes but that doesn't tell us what his exact abilities are no he's got to discover it that's the whole thing the swamp thing is like on and i don't feel like he does though that's our point he's not discovering it i feel like he already knows what he can do because nothing he never has like like i said he never has that moment of like holy shit i just ripped a car apart like he's just like oh i'm gonna rip this car apart like he just knows that he can do it so you're saying he needs some reaction shots the fact that he stands in front of the car was like he knew he was going to stop the car it wasn't just an instinctual thing to keep the car from hitting the woman that he loves and then it was like oh shit i survived because you never get that shot is what you're saying of him going like oh wow look at what i just did we we are completely it kind of feels like we're completely cut off from his experience as something we see his sorrow absolutely over over his uh, sister and his work and everything being destroyed but other than that like they really do once they get rid of ray wise and it does turn into the stun double yeah. like we are cut off from what swamp thing was kind of really right. going through and, it, and it's like he emerges with total self-awareness as a swamp thing yeah he for being the title character this is really adrian barbo's movie yeah for yeah, sure. Because she's we're getting her yeah. perspective, her thoughts, her emotions, her journey. That's what the movie's about. Yeah. yeah. And that's, frankly, I she's and, thing. and frankly, she's not that likable to like relate to anyway. What so I'm the just fuck like, are you you talking about the woman that I love? You're insulting the love yeah. of his mm-hmm. life, Holly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The love he of your life this. has a fucking afro mullet. So let's just it's be real here. Hair. It's, just, it's not good here. She hair. wasn't <laughs> happy with that either. Uh yeah, she had problems with seeing that like on the uh when she first saw it's the just, movie. Oh, yeah. Or the dailies. Humidity. But yeah. Um, I don't think that's the only problem. <laughs> no, but I think he is going through like that, uh, you know, but yeah, he gets shot and then, you know, the bullets don't kill him. He's able, he's yeah. just out of rage, lashing out at stuff and flipping things over, you know, or like I said, I read it that he instinctively stood in front of the car and didn't know, but you're right. There is no reaction shot of him looking at his hands going like, what? You know, and then later he has some superpowers where he can just, uh, 
I, again, I think it's like instinct. He sits down with uh, Jude when Jude's been either killed or fatally, you know, like injured. And his brains blown out. That's yeah, what they did. Yeah, the bad guys like leave him in a in a in a canoe or something, and Swamp Thing just kind of heals him like Jesus, right? He puts his hands so, on him, and there's a little bit right, of glowing things. This he heals brings him. me. This brings me to a question of Swamp Thing's power because he. He brings him back to life, right? And then later on, we we see him again when um, what what is her name? Cable is that her name? Yeah, Cable, Abby yeah. Cable. Yeah, Cable. Yeah, Cable. So Cable is is essentially dying, right? And he's holding her, and he's literally watching her die. And he doesn't not until she's already gone. Does he take off his little moss purse and put it on her on her tit and like bring her back? I'm like uh, he my- waited for her to die. So My theory he, is that he did that and he uh, was only going to cop a feel and he accidentally brought her back to life. That, that would make more sense. Okay. Yeah. That makes it was sense. just that like, time. well, she's dead. I might as well go in for a quick, you know, quick grab. Yeah, okay. like, oh, shit. shit. I mean, you're, uh, you're alive. Great. <laughs> My intent. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm so glad you're back. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah, because okay, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, obviously, you know, he's distracted because he's got to fight the big bad at the end of the movie, and that was why. Was but it was bad? like, was she actually dead? So, okay, yeah, let's this get. Thing to... Didn't seem like a real threat. I, I'm not convinced. <laughs> okay, so so it's, the way we get bad. to this, you're right, is that uh, Louis Jordan does eventually capture everybody and holds them in their in his dungeon because all of these has, like but southern. First he has a lovely dinner party. Yeah, the Southern Palace has like you know the place where you have a dinner for all of your. Uh, cronies of which there are I don't know like a hundred people wives. in that room this was yeah th- isn't this, this was a bring uh, your spouse situation isn't this Leo DiCaprio's place from uh, uh from, from Django from, from Django, Django. <laughs> kind of <laughs> like it well, you got to have the, the you not only have the the dungeon, but you also have like the the well in the middle of the floor, the bubbling well in the you know, I mean, like, yes, yeah, I'd kill for real bubbling estate well like from this. Slugs makes a return. Yeah, I have a problem with this well. So they say that like it leads to the swamp, right? When they go to escape, so, so they what, get Adrian, in the basement. <laughs> so Adrian Barbo just held her breath the whole time they were swimming through that thing. No problem. Apparently so. He's he's yeah. probably got some special swamp thing power. He just like, yeah. <laughs> he just shoves tentacles down. Her <laughs> <mouth>. Here, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's the, the only way he can help her, but it's got to be really awkward. Here, open your mouth. <laughs> we have to go. <laughs> that's Why probably... didn't the big bed chase them here? <laughs> It just stopped. Uh, Once they went in the well, it just stopped and stood there. No, it came through. It just oh, yeah. It came up. Remember they had a they had a fist fight with a sword later. Right, on? but yeah. when we see that when, when we see them fighting. escape, when we see them escape, it just runs down after and stands there and looks in the well. Yeah, like we don't actually see it go in the well. Right. I know. They can't get that costume wet. They, yeah. they can't afford. They only have one. Suspense. Yeah, that was the dry costume. Yes. <laughs> Suspense. We got to wonder: Did he actually go through, yeah, or what's suspense. happening? So yeah, I was really on the edge of my seat, wondering: Is he really going to bring that sword? <laughs> yeah, he did. So it's okay, a sword. This but, is, it's a sword, Colin. They're monsters. But to get there, so we have our big monster e monster fight. Right? Mm. They have the dinner party. Uh, Arcane creates the serum. But he feeds it to Bruno, poor Bruno. And Bruno turns into, actually, that was a kind of a painful scene. I, like that actor pulled that off. I was like, Jesus Christ, uh, as he's yeah, sprouting was, warts and stuff. It was just his I performance, like I think, it was, uh, was you know. Um, but Why he did turned, he shrink three feet in size? Right. He shrinks three feet in size after drinking a plant-animal hybrid biorestorative formula. So we don't know. Right, this is never explained because uh, well, we, we find we find out. Okay, it's but explained. this is how I've always read this: when uh, Arcane goes down and talks to Swamp Thing, and he's like, "Well, how come we fed it to Bruno? He didn't turn out like you. You're strong. He's like shrank." And Swamp Thing tells him that like all it does is amplify your essence and make you more of what you already are. Bruno was timid. Yes. He shrank. And so Arcane is like, I am a plant man on the inside. I become a plant man on the outside. Right. Because this makes absolutely no sense. How a plant formula would make you into something more of your essence. Right. We went, we went scientific and then he got all philosophical. And it's yeah. just like, it's, it's you. I just- choose to believe Sean that Swamp Thing is smarter than the average bear, and he was fucking lying to Arcane, so Arcane would drink the shit. <laughs> but this, of I mean, course, probably. is not in the There's movie. In the, right, this is not in the movie. You are correct. Yeah. But probably. 
Yeah. But who knows? He's it's like, fine, I'll get you to drink it and kill yourself. You know, whatever, whatever's going to happen to you. And this is also the scene in which Swamp Thing discovers another thing about himself that, hey, if he reaches up into the sunlight, uh, he can sprout a new, brand new arm and grow it, which we get that little, little tiny arm. A little baby of. Groot arm, <laughs> which is pretty great. Uh, it's like a Deadpool arm at first. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it is it's a very little baby Deadpool. hand. It's just a little yeah. baby, a little strong hand. Yeah. It's great. And then <laughs> it's, that's, I mean, that's, yes, that is great. And then, uh, arcane does drink the thing, but of course it doesn't act the way that he was hoping that he'd become like this beautiful, super strong thing that could take over the world. Uh, he becomes, I don't know how you would describe this creature, let alone the horrible, awful costume, uh, that they, cause it, the problem with the go. costume no, it's- is it has these fixed open yellow eyes. They're just like <laughs> yeah, sewn no, buttons into the thing. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's break this down. So picture like a bad Wolfman costume, but halfway down the torso, the fur becomes kind of scaly and the face instead of a wolf is more like a warthog, but it has like, Michael Jackson, too. but it has like Michael Jackson thriller eyes, but not contacts. It's like a teddy bear. Yeah, that's what we're working with here. Yeah, I would Warthog. say, yeah, I would say Toka and Razor from TMNT two, but as done by the Samurai Cop people. Yeah, that's good too. That's good too. Yeah, it it, it is an unmoving mask. It has never looked good. I was saying that Swamp Thing looked cool to me when I was a kid, but that thing never did. Even as a kid, I was like, Oof. oh, that looks Let, pretty legit, bad. Legit, we had, we, had the, we had the little, we had little hands, and then about 10 seconds later, we had Warthog face, and I had a good laugh. I had a good, like, 30-second laugh between those two a, scenes. There was a little metamorphosis in there. He turns into a bag of shit at one point that he's just yeah. kind of running around. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, like... And, and he's he like, has to break out of a molding to become right? a new monster. Oh, that was my other question. Was like, how come he, like, cocooned into a creature? The other ones just became it, but he, he, like, went into a cocoon. Like a rock cocoon. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it is, like a fucking is, geode or something. And I didn't, yeah, I didn't know warthogs came out of cocoons, but hey, here you go. Didn't know that sword Weird. wielding warthogs because he does chase yeah, Swamp Thing down with a sword so bad. They're like, we gotta liven this <laughs> up a little bit. Give him a sword, something. Yeah, what is because his superpower? He's a, because he's not a savage, Colin. He's dignified, right? Yeah, oh, he doesn't right. fight with his hands. Right there, you go. Very true. Uh, Can you imagine those two fencing? I want to see them fencing. Well, we now. got the closest to thing to it because Swamp Thing grabbed the whatever the stalagmite, stalactite, stalagmite, whatever that was growing out. What are those f- things? It's a tree They're branch. Just swamp trees. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was a tree. A stalagmite, stalagmite. Those are caves. That's different. Yeah. And we get the yeah. uh, massive battle in the swamp with Swamp Thing wailing away on this dude and that dude massive swinging battle. a sword. Yeah, massive. it's a tight tennis. Collage, Godzilla versus Kong, and you wanted more, didn't you? This is why we're watching this movie. I said we're gonna have like a monster. This was, it's monster fight. This weekend. is your first Godzilla versus Kong. <laughs> and you wanted to now that you've got the new one, you wanted to go back and watch this. All right. Yeah. I get it. Uh but Adrian Barbeau does get stabbed in the heart or the boob, depending <laughs> on how you're reading it. Um because sure. she's wearing a very uh, revealing low cut uh, nightgown that they put her in and tied her to the chair with in the previous scene. Uh, so Swamp Thing, yes, has to mend her eventually with his moss. And she peels off of his chest and again lays his hand upon her and she springs mm-hmm. back to life. So you think, like, are these two lovebirds going to make a go of it? Because she's like, you know, you can go back to your work, Alec. Right. Yeah, I'll, Take me with you. I want to point out that that moss also acted as like a tide stick because her dress no longer had blood on it too. Oh, that nice. went away. But she so, was in the water. Nice. Holly is swamp water. I mean, that's uh, water. Water. yeah. yeah. Nothing washes out a white apparently. dress better than swamp water. <laughs> that's what's in OxyClean. Didn't you know that? It's just ten percent swamp water. Yeah. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. Tide swamp water. That's all it is. Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, but Swamp Thing, of course, because we've seen that scene uh, again, which was ripped off in Dark Man, where, you know, like my hands, my hands, my hands don't work anymore. Uh, <laughs> it has to like, nope, I'm going to go off. The world of men is no longer for me. And I'm going to wander off into the swamp and be one with I the can't swamp. science anymore. Yeah. I must become science. <laughs> yeah. He walks off like Sasquatch. It's all it's hilarious. I was like, <laughs> I was wondering if I could take a screenshot of that and put like a filter over it and then put it online and be like, oh, look at this footage I got of <laughs> Fucking to see if anybody would notice. <laughs> I bet you could. Has somebody done that? We should. We could make the meme, right? It goes around. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, but he, he promises, I will always be with you, which, uh, of course, promises right. a sequel. It took, uh, whatever, seven Bullshit. years to uh, to come around <laughs> in the hands of Jim Minorsky. <laughs> the return Jesus, of Swamp I thing. can only imagine. Louis Jordan comes back for the sequel. Would you be surprised? What? Yes. How? They make no mention survive? of the fact that I can't uh, remember. Maybe they do. I, you know, like I said, it's been so long since I've seen it. Maybe they you're do. Like you know, so much about this movie that I need to straighten out because you're not giving me a clear answer, and you're gonna make me watch Return of Swamp Thing. It starts off with a montage set to "Born on the Bayou." <gasps> of course it does. Okay. At least uh, okay. So you they know had how some much money. I love a montage, Colin. There Why you didn't you bring it? Who's bringing Return of Swamp Thing? To the Saturday Night Freak Show, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so there, that's the promise that we uh, await for Wes Craven. I think I can't remember if the next year he did the Hills Have Eyes Part Two, and then of course he struck Pater with uh, Nightmare on Elm Street two years later in 1984. Yes. Um, so he had that, um, <laughs> which was nice. Yeah, and the movie made a bunch of money, and uh, those people were able to uh, the producers. We're able to keep their relationship with DC Comics and we're able to secure the rights to Batman. And so that came out of either that deal or something, too. You know what I like so about that it? Swamp Thing? I like we'll that it said, Batman. like, uh, based on characters published in magazines by DC Comics. Magazines. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Not graphic novels. Not comics. Magazines. magazines. This is serious business. We cannot call them comic books. They're right. magazines. <laughs> All right, so you've heard us talk long enough probably about Swamp Thing. You want to know if whether or not we would recommend it to you. I have a way, I have a feeling how this is going to go, but we're going to find out. But first of all, <laughs> we got to make a game out of this somehow, Colin. You keep saying this. You're like, I think I know where it's going. So we need to play like Colin's, Colin's guessing game. I know, right? We <laughs> do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Colin writes down what he thinks we're going to say and then puts in the bowl and then he reveals it afterwards. I feel like <laughs> next time I'm bringing this somehow. a piece of paper and a pen that's all we need right? okay. and I just hold it up and you'll come I mean, that's it yeah yeah okay all right all right uh so but before we do that uh we're going to introduce you to the interactive portion of our show which is uh, when we summon our mailman to read some of your mail and in order to do that we're going to have to call on igor to bring us our mail Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Straight from the swamp. Thank you, Igor. Colin, <laughs> Igor told me that uh, he had a very special delivery for us tonight. <gasps> what? No. If you see this big box I'm holding, loyal listener Travis Legler sent us... Oh, a ton. did you send us kitties? No, not kitties. It's a ton of <laughs> movie merch. We've got Chucky. We've got Halloween 2. Mm. We've got more Halloween 2. We've got Halloween 25 Years of Terror. We've Whoa. got more Halloween. It is like Christmas in this Holy box here, so. shit. Oh, my God. Uh, wow. Once we all get vaccinated, I will hand them out to you guys, and we will have a little <laughs> uh, freak show Christmas. But uh, yes, yeah, Travis Legler, loyal listener, reached out to oh, me and damn. Asked to send that over, and it got delivered like yesterday, so it was perfect timing. Oh wow! That's well, Travis, amazing. yeah, thank, thank you very you, much. Sir. Wow, we appreciate it. That's right, and we appreciate your activity in the chat. You always keep it lively in there. Thank you. Yeah, he does. Well, wait, how do people participate in this chat? Maybe they can follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Science Freak Show or Twitter at Sat Freak Show. <laughs> or they can email us directly. Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. And you can also follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Well, of course, MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. 
uh, has informed us that not only are we inducting Nicholas Wirth into the Saturday Night Free Show wall, but also Ray Wise, who, uh, you know, because to make it on the wall, you got to be in three movies that we've covered. And Ray Wise was in Swamp Thing. He was in RoboCop. And he was also in Cat People. Now, okay, everybody's going like, wait, I don't remember Ray Wise being in Cat People because Ray Wise, prior to this, he used to be a soap opera star and in Cat People on TV, they're watching a soap opera that stars uh, Ray Wise. So uh, technically he is in the movie. So there you He's go. He's also in Gilmore Girls. Like everyone that's ever been in anything is also in Gilmore Girls. <laughs> at some point. True. But thank God that has not been covered the on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, mm-hmm. So about tonight's movie, Swamp Thing, Jacob Kotner writes in and says, oh man, this movie's a whole lot of fun. I liked the sequel much more when I was a kid, but when we reviewed this for Refund Theater, I had way more fun than I ever expected. Jude is one of the coolest characters in any movie ever. Give that kid his own series and keep freaking, my friends. Hey, thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, Teresa Ann says... When I was a kid, I used to be obsessed with the TV series that aired on the USA Network in the very early 90s. I didn't see the film until my early teens, and I still have a soft, swampy place for the big green guy. <laughs> is it is it near your ass? Like, is that the only swampy place? Okay, never mind. <laughs> uh jacob, jacob laws writes in and says i remember loving this movie as a kid watching this during the early 90s i fondly remember the cartoon of this and the toxic crusader i think both of those were out around the same oh, yeah. time and they were both like ecologically themed uh cartoons yes um uh, yes, yes. apple leva says ah an adrian barbeau sighting mm. that hair though indeed I know what that. you mean, sir. Can't miss her with that hair. I know. No, it's the first thing you see coming. I wonder, you know, if she takes it up and hangs it up at the end of the day. Uh, like well, Dom Cree says uh, he's only ever seen the sequel, but all he remembers from that is Heather Locklear and a villain saying, 10 years of training in Okinawa, but the way he delivers it is gold. Um, sorry, <laughs> uh, Dom, I don't remember how he delivered it, so I couldn't do it. I'm going to have to watch it and find out. Uh, Travis Legler. Uh, writes in and says wait what version are you watching the one that shows the nude bath scene and some more gore or the edited one he says i love this movie my only issue is the look of the swamp thing suit from the neck down the face is good he looks better in the sequel in the first tv show i wish they would have had the suit from the second movie in this one but still the movie is enjoyable it's a forgotten Wes craven fun film I do remember the suit from the second one was different and it seemed more swamp thingy like the mouth was different and all that yeah, they, that's I the, think they got it better for those. That's the Alan Moore redesign. You should check out, uh, you know, at least a couple scenes or maybe the whole show. It's like about 10 episodes, the 2019 one, because uh, he does look. I mean, like if you're doing a modern swamp thing, that one's got it. Uh, Jake Castonia says, I watched this movie the other day for the second time. The first time I saw it was on HBO and I must have been about seven or eight years old and it scared the ever living bleep out of me. I was curious to go back to it 35 years later to revisit what terrified me so much. It was Ray Wise in general and also Ray Wise being set on fire. Then it was the scene of the guy (laughs) talking or taking the potion unwittingly and freaking out. That's the Bruno scene. And then the scene of Louis Jordan transforming into the fox creature thing. It seems silly now, but weird how I could pick out those specific scenes that scarred me oh yeah i still got uh, yeah. i get it i still got the uh we mentioned it the the thriller michael jackson transformation scared the shit out of me still and, yeah, does I, can, to this day. I can see those i can see those scenes being scary to a kid for sure uh, Oh yeah. Like I said, Ray Wise is always terrifying. And this is even before he was Leland Palmer, you know, he's just always terrifying. Um, Especially on fire Ray Wise. That yes. is yeah. top tier terrifying. Well, two weeks ago we watched a movie called Serial Mom. Steve Dunn writes in, he says, I love Serial Mom. Yeah. So do we. Uh, yeah. Travis Michael says uh, the moment where uh the woman gets her toes cleaned by the dog. Oh. He says that moment scarred him as a kid. Yeah, apparently it's for scarred sure. Colin too because he posted that specific post we had. <laughs> gross on social gross. media. Uh, Grant Parrish says I had to reconcile that Jessica Rabbit is also Chandler Bing's dad. Yes, she yeah. sold me every time though. Kudos. 
Yes. We were asking people what uh, their memorable Kathleen Turner roles are, because I'm curious if it's Serial Mom or something else. Uh, mm. B. Shaw Foolery says, I stumbled across Body Heat on Cinemax when I was 13. And then there's some emojis of, like, eyes wide open and mouths wide open. Like, oh. Uh, he says, after that, it was Romancing the Stone, which I thought was on par with Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, and Peter Gatt says, I'm rewatching Serial Mom this afternoon. And I have a permanent smile on my face. And oh, the film I remember Turner from most is Body Heat. And I'm surprised no one mentioned it. I, I haven't seen a lot of Kathleen I've, Turner movies. I've, yeah, I've never seen Body Heat. So yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure the think. Body Heat was within my wheelhouse as a young a young girl. So It might have been in mine. Yeah. But I don't think I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, I there saw you it. Go. I saw it. Yeah. I, I mean, was going to uh, say, Colin, I was maybe Sean and Colin, but I was gonna not say, my Colin's, face. Colin's pretty much the catch-all at this point. Just yeah. like, <laughs> we go around the room, everyone says whatever, and then Colin's like, I saw it in theaters. Yeah, well, I didn't see it in theaters, but I have seen... Body Did it go heat. to theaters? Oh, yeah. Body Heat was a big deal. Scandalous. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. They out. used to put some shit in theaters, Holly. Yeah. <laughs> You remember the postman always rings twice with uh, Jack Nicholson and Jessica Lange. That one was a scorcher. I do. Yeah, you know, it was controversy. Um, well, against all odds with Jeff Bridges and that poster of them on the beat. Okay, uh, Jimbo Ice <laughs> said, "I rewatched Desperate Living. This is a John Waters movie for the first time in 15 years recently. Despite having a lot more nudity and rabies than I remembered, I was surprised at how well told its admittedly insane story is. John Waters may have been an international provocateur throughout his career, but the man can tell a story underneath all the depravity, which makes yeah. his work more significant than comparably sleazy trauma or grindhouse films. Very yeah, true. Great way sure. I would. It. I would rather watch tra trauma or John Waters. I'd be like, I'll go with John Waters. I'll. I'll I'm probably. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. With that choice, I am also going to side with John Waters. Right. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Michael Whitaker. All the trauma people are out there shaking their fists right now. Yeah, Michael, it's uh, just. I think it's a. It's a taste. It's just a taste. Uh, no. No offense to all that. It's just a taste. Yeah. Uh, Michael Whitaker says Pink Flamingos was another in a series of movies that were on the rack of the video store that I would pass all the time. I've seen Polyester late night on Comedy Central. Also, to clarify, Hairspray is my favorite film of his because it was the first one I saw. Plus, I dig the '60s aesthetic. Sure. Yeah, for sure. I can get that. Yeah. And uh, Mark Harrison says, I thought the white shoed juror looked familiar. And I was trying to think of what other films or TV series I've seen her in the following day while washing the dishes. I just randomly yelled Patty Hearst in front of my family. <laughs> this outburst convinced my mother to stop watching all the John Benet Ramsey documentaries and start watching all the Patty Hearst content. But really, who owns that many pairs of white shoes? Truth. Well, yeah, I think it was the same pair of shoes, wasn't it? I don't know how women were. Yeah, how many how many days Kidding. on the trial were they? We don't know, but it was always white oh. shoes after Labor Day. I was like, people wear white shoes, or the people wear shoes every day. Like, yeah, just the one pair. <laughs> yeah, I've worn brown shoes for you know probably two years running now. So, right. same pair. Right. Just probably same pair of white shoes. Okay, well then I guess that brings us to the most contentious part of the night, the moment you've all been waiting for, the where we go around the room and tell you what we thought individually of tonight's movie, Swamp Thing, starting with... Michaela, you are first. What did you think of Swamp Thing? Swamp Thing, or Swamp Wang? Well, I'm not super well-versed in this character, um, and I don't know if I'm going to go any further into learning about this character because this movie really, I kind of expected more action, more gore, more violence. Didn't expect a diary chase through the swamp, you know, um, it, but that is a very comic booky thing. So I understand it, but I just found it to be kind of boring and the costume was like just not great. I understand there's budget cuts. This is 1982. So I like, I make allowances for that. And that's not a reason to not recommend a movie, obviously. Um, had some great laughs, but they were not intended by the director for those. Not, I wasn't supposed to be laughing at that stuff. Um, I mean, I still think Wes Craven is a talented director and can make a really competent movie. I, if I feel like this happens a lot where his budget gets slashed on stuff he's working on. So that's unfortunate, but it's maybe this character just isn't for me. Um, or maybe this movie's just a bad first introduction. I don't know, but it's, I, I, I'm sure our fans love it. And if you do, that's great, but it's just not for me. So I'm not going to recommend it. Uh, Holly, what'd you think? 
Yeah, um, I'm on the same page where I didn't really know a whole lot about Swamp Thing. Obviously, I'm familiar with the imagery of Swamp Thing and I'm familiar with like specifically what it looked like in this movie. I've seen lots of, you know, photos and clips and stuff. Um, but I guess in my mind, I was just kind of associated it to be on the same the same lines as like a uh, creature from the black lagoon. I don't associate it with being like a superhero or a comic book thing. I always forget that it's a comic book uh, based character. Um, and going into this, like I said, that that's kind of where my mind was at. And then being that it was a Wes Craven movie, like you said, Michaela, I, I had certain expectations that it was going to be more scary or gore. Something was going to be a little more. Um, and then right before I turned it on, I saw it was PG and I was like, oh, no, <laughs> it's not going to give me what I what I want it to. Um, and it really it just depends didn't. on the year. Yeah. PG. Yeah, I had hoped well, that an 82 true. PG <laughs> meant something different. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> It did. There were um, boobs. There were boobs. <laughs> there were. <laughs> no, well, not in this one, but anyway. Um, yeah, no, I agree. I think there was some, uh, like, there was some, there was some really pretty imagery. Like, there was moments that I would see a shot and I'm like, okay, I can literally see this as like a pain in a comic book. This is just, it, it looks good. It, I, I can see the the storyboarding there. Like, it, I, I enjoyed some of the look of the of the swamp. Um, but yeah, no, it was just, I was, I agree with Michaela. I was just kind of bored with it. I didn't really care about any of the characters. Like they kind of set up some, some feeling with, uh, with our, our, um, doctor, not Swamp Thing, but doctor. Um, but it didn't, it didn't go far enough for me to care when he became Swamp Thing. And I definitely didn't care about Cable. So I was just like, I don't really know what I'm supposed to want to happen in this movie. Am I going to, do I want him to? like not be Swamp Thing anymore? Do I want him to be like, you know, walking, like Swamp Thing walking amongst people? Like, I don't know what I want for him because I just don't care. So uh, yeah, I agree with, with what Michaela said. Like, I don't care about people chasing a diary through a swamp. So yeah, it just didn't give me what I wanted. Didn't meet, maybe it didn't meet my expectations. I don't know. Maybe it should have been more ridiculous. I don't know what I, what I really wanted from it, but yeah, it didn't really do it for me. So I'm going to say you could probably pass on Swamp Thing if you're not already invested in this character or this this storyline or anything. So, yeah, got I got to pass. Sean, what did you think? Do we ever get Swamp Thing in the city? Like he's got to go to New York, but he's got to like he teams up with Batman. Manhattan. He teams yeah. up with Batman, yeah. Superman. He's part of the Justice League Dark. Yeah, there's a whole thing. Oh, nice. I wonder what his limitations are if he mm -hmm. can't be away from the swamp for too long. I, I like the idea of the character, and I'm kind of curious about him. Um, your description of the Alan Moore uh, comic sounds good. Like, I'd like to see um, like that version of the character. So would I. Um <laughs> <laughs> right yeah um, that's fair i i do know the i know the character a little bit uh, uh but not a lot like I, i've always known he's existed and kind of where he comes from but not much more than that um as far as this movie goes uh i think this movie is only for hardcore swamp thing uh fans um i think they will be mostly the only ones who are going to get something out of this i mean it's early it's rough it's i mean budget cuts ridiculousness uh this, i'm gonna say misuse of budget because that costume at the end was a misuse of funds and kind of a crime um it's yeah like holly and michaela said it's just it gets to a point where it gets repetitive and boring in the middle of it and man when i clicked and i saw it was only 53 minutes in i was almost heartbroken uh <laughs> I, it really was. Funny thing is, though, that last twenty minutes, I'll, I would watch any day. Like when they start, <laughs> when they start getting into that point, like I don't know if it was the last, I probably the last twenty. Like it was, it was going, and the ridiculousness went up. Like our villain got more mustache twirly. Like he's drinking shit. There's train. Like there's like I said, shit bag transformations, and it gets wild. There's a beast, uh, a beast man fighting with a sword, fighting a swamp thing in a swamp. It, it it that last 20 minutes if it was an episode of tv great like if you know um then that'd be fine but on that it's just it's there's not enough there to get you through it and i am not uh in love enough with adrian barbeau to to be able to stick with her for a huge chunk of this movie with hair like that so it's almost a dismissal on the hair itself i'm sorry it's just very distracting 
Um, but the movie is, like I said, probably just for hardcore Swamp Thing fans only. I'm going to pass on it. Um, it. It got closer in that last 20 minutes, but it's a no-go for me. So I'm going to pass on Swamp Thing. Colin, take us home. Well, this is always kind of interesting when you bring something that you completely and totally love to the Saturday Night Freak Show, and then it gets totally <laughs> shit on and no. shot down. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it's like, well, am I sitting there looking at this through the lens of nostalgia? Because obviously I was a kid when I saw the movie. I was a kid when I discovered Swamp Thing. I think I have like the first issue. You know, I've got I've got Swamp Thing comics more than I have any other any other character. Um and so, you know, it's like, am I bringing that with it? This time around, I was kind of looking at, uh, like, Wes Craven. Obviously, this is a subject that I'm assuming is a work for hire kind of thing. But he's always, like, I actually did think that the script was pretty well written and pretty well constructed for what it was trying to do. I know you're saying that it was repetitive. I guess I never felt that way. I think there is, like... Uh, you know, because you don't have geography really because you're in a swamp, right? There's just trees everywhere. You don't really know where you are. That can kind of give you the sense of like, all right, we're here and we're there and I don't know where we're going. But as far as like what was actually happening for just kind of constructing a, uh, you know, like here's our little action movie that we got to get through. It's like, okay. And he was actually giving people lines like, um, they're always referencing. I mean, I know this about Wes Craven that, you know, he didn't uh, see movies until he was like in his twenties or something like that. Right. There was something yeah. like that in his past. So obviously the guy's a reader. He's a very uh, a literate guy. Cause uh, every line that he gives, um, uh, Louis Jordan's character is like uh, uh, comes from classic literature. He's always, you know, making all of these asides and like, oh, this means, you know. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool. But this is as as an adult, as a kid, you sit there and you watch it for, you know, like it's a it's a green monster movie. But I think, uh, and, and they're, they're going to fight at the end. And yeah, you're disappointed by like how bad the costumes look. But I think there's like a tragedy and a pathos to the Swamp Thing character and like a sweet nature, like you said uh you know to the to the character and this kind of like it is to me it reads as like a really tender little love story you know it's like he's lost this thing you know this this love that is never going to get to happen and so you know he's trying to protect this woman from all these uh people and it's like i'm never going to be a uh, human again and all this so colin are you swamp thing <laughs> am i swamp thing I mean, that would be I'll awesome. Looking, if for you, your, if looking for your Adrian Barbo. Aren't we all looking for Adrian <laughs> Barbo? Well, apparently you're no. saying you're not, but you're you're not normal. I mean, the rest of us, See, yeah, uh, we are out there looking I, for Adrian yeah, Barbo. I, I kind of, I kind of felt like he was more sad about losing his relationship with science. <laughs> <laughs> it's everything he lost everything the poor guy okay well we're not yes. gonna beat this horse to death <laughs> clearly we see two different movies um but uh, i mean i would absolutely recommend uh the movie uh you know just for genre aficionados to check out but that's saying that it's not a representation of the swamp thing character that i actually like which is the alan moore you know where alan moore took it and i'm i'm saying you know even if and this one this is the thing that i'm afraid of you know you guys are saying like i don't even want to go even any further and check out this uh, character but those alan moore is a great writer you know the fact that he works in comic books is kind of you know beside the point he's a great writer and the the thing that he did with like this a uh, character he was assigned uh for over those 40 issues are some of the best some of the best like i mean especially like horror supernatural and and just uh metaphysical that's what alan moore gets into the psychedelic and the metaphysical are some of the best things that i'd uh ever uh read you know um so i would definitely and now they're available in trade paperbacks you can go find alan well, Moore's so I was is, there a, is there a collection yep. of um okay yeah there's, there's several there. volumes of them you can go find um so yeah i would recommend those as well um so anyway that's uh that's uh, three passes and one hard you got to see it for uh swamp thing next week we're watching a movie that's chosen by john what are we watching next week you have a you have a smile that i'm very nervous about i do it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a rock and pick um uh you guys beetlejuice it so here it goes next week we're watching howard the duck <laughs> all right so that's uh, next week on the saturday night freak show howard the duck 
Just, just insert the crickets here, 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 here. <laughs> and you until then, you just brought nothing but trouble. And on the backs of that, you're bringing Howard the Duck. You can really, you guys put now, it up there together. Wow. I, I, I have to ask. Would did you already pick this before I said I hated that movie earlier, or was it when I said that that you made that decision? Uh, who's to say? Oh. <laughs> okay, well, there's right. your answer, Holly. That's he my decided answer right yeah. now. Well, Thank I'm you. excited because I you. haven't seen Howard the Duck since it originally came out, and everybody bombed like you know everybody yeah, you hated it. it. Yeah, so, I think it'll be a good conversation. All right. Open your minds and your hearts, and good things will come. That's right, because I'm sure he's coming back to theaters in some way, shape, or form. Now he was in the Gu- Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> movie, so Howard the Duck, we're going back in time, George Lucas. Howard the Duck. Next week on the Saturday Night Free Show. Until then, the basement is going dark.